In Brazil, football means everything. It's not just a game, it's a way of life. As pioneers of the modern era of football, Brazil created a new way to play, bringing with them all the speed and swagger of samba. From unexpected back heels to no-look passes, elasticos and rainbow flicks, the football played by Brazil is more than just a sport. It's a dance, a movement, a work of art. The football that was made popular on the streets of Sao Paulo and the beaches of Rio de Janeiro transferred onto the pitch mesmerizing people across the world lucky enough to catch a glimpse of it. From the trickery and flair of Garincha and Pele to the skills and power of Ronaldinho and Ronaldo, Brazil's influence on football changed the sport forever. And when Neymar came onto the scene, a new legend was born, one that was going to take the world of football by storm. When Nadine de Silva gave birth to her first and only son in 1992, little did she know the incredible journey her little boy's life would be. Her husband, Neymar Santos, although a footballer himself, could never have predicted that the boy named after him would go on to become a global superstar. When his son, Junior, was born, Neymar Santos Sr. was playing out his final years in Mogi das Cruzes, a sprawling industrial suburb located on the outer reaches of the Sao Paulo metropolis. He had never been a successful player, but had worked his way through the lower leagues of Brazilian football. Like any father in Brazil, Neymar Sr.'s dream was to see his son grace the football pitch in the iconic yellow and green jersey, a dream that became a reality just 18 years later. The 1990s and early 2000s were known as the second golden era in Brazilian football, after winning two World Cups in 1994 and 2002. Fueled by the three R's, Ronaldo, Rivaldo, and Ronaldinho, Brazil had one of the greatest teams to ever play the game. Growing up, the young Neymar Jr. joined the Portuguesa Santista Youth Club in 1999, and within a few years was one of the country's most highly regarded young talents. His style of play, even when he was growing up, was heavily influenced by his love of futsal. He developed a technique that mixed quick speed, dribbling, slick skills and sharpshooting. Position players couldn't keep up with his speed and agility. He was simply unplayable at times. Even at a young age, Neymar embodied the beautiful game as it should be played, with skill, pace, style, and just a hint of arrogance. In 2003, the 11-year-old Neymar caught the attention of Santos FC, and after he was offered a spot on the youth team, his family moved to Santos. The 120-kilometer trip south to Santos marked the start of the young Brazilian's football career. His new club, Santos FC, was already synonymous with helping develop some of Brazil's best players. In the past, internationals like Rabino, Ilana, 
and Alex all went through the youth academy, going on to become stars of world football. But the history of Santos and its legendary status stems from one player in particular, the man colloquially known as the king of the game. Pele. Nearly 50 years before Neymar played at Santos, the young Pele began his career at the club. Pele laid the foundations of what was to become the beautiful game. In a career that spanned 21 years, Pele was a world beater and a record breaker. With 683 career goals, 92 hat tricks, and three World Cups, the boy from Santos cemented his name in history as the world's best footballer. For Neymar, the chance to follow in Pele's footsteps made playing for Santos an even bigger dream. His youth career went on to match that of his idol as he impressed his coaches, becoming one of the most important players on the team. Slowly but surely, the young Neymar was knocking on the door of the senior team, and other clubs around the world were beginning to take notice of him. When he was 14, Neymar traveled to Spain for tryouts with the Real Madrid youth team. At the time, Madrid was in its Galactico era, where the new club president, Florentino Perez, would sign at least one global football star every summer transfer window. With players like Ronaldo, Zinedine Zidane, David Beckham, and Roberto Carlos all in the team, Real Madrid was the best in the world. You know, I've joined a, a club that is a massive club. You know, if, uh, if I was going to um, leave Manchester United at any time in my career, then to join uh, a massive club like Real Madrid is a dream. Whilst the teenager impressed scouts at Madrid, his dad decided it wasn't the right time for a big move, preferring the young prodigy to stay at Santos while he grew up. Neymar's success in the Santos youth team didn't just positively impact his life, it began to impact his family too. When he was 15, Neymar was earning the equivalent of $2,000 per month. By the time he was 16, his salary jumped to the equivalent of $25,000 per month. This was unprecedented, but ensured their star players signed with the team for the long term. With the added income, Neymar's family were able to buy their first house, right next to Santos Stadium. The dream of becoming a professional footballer was slowly but surely becoming a reality for the young Brazilian. At 17, Neymar signed his first professional contract with Santos and began training with the senior team.
On the 7th of March, 2009, Neymar made his professional debut for the club in a 2-1 win against Oeste. The following week, he scored his first goal. One month later, Neymar scored the decisive goal in a 2-1 win against Palmeiras to secure a place in the final of the league's competition. Whilst Santos ultimately lost the final against Corinthians, Neymar had made an impression as one of the most exciting new players to watch at Santos. By the end of his first season, Neymar went on to score 14 goals in 48 games across all competitions. Fans and media were mesmerized by the skill and flash of the winger, earning him the Best Young Player Award. For a debut season, Neymar was laying the perfect foundations for what was to come. But it wouldn't be until the following season that he began to make a name for himself. Across the world, all eyes were on Neymar following his debut season for Santos. And as the 2010 World Cup Finals loomed closer, he knew that impressing the national team coach throughout the new campaign would give him a chance to represent Brazil in the summer. The 2010 World Cup was one for the history books too, as for the first time, it was being hosted in South Africa, making it the first World Cup to ever be hosted by an African nation. Neymar emerged as a fully formed footballing star in the 2010 season, and his performances for Santos soon began to draw comparisons to other Brazilians, including Robinho and Pele. Now in his second season as a professional footballer, Neymar was an integral part of the Santos team, helping them claim the league and the Copa do Brasil championships. He was awarded player of the season, ending the year with 42 goals. Following his success, Neymar became the target of clubs in Europe, hoping to secure Brazil's newest young talent for themselves. Santos rejected bids from West Ham United and Chelsea, the latter bid being close to 20 million pounds. Not nearly enough for the boy who was tipped to be the next big thing. He was becoming more than just a footballer in Brazil. With the debut of his iconic Mohawk-style haircut, which quickly became popular among younger fans across the world, Neymar was becoming a brand in itself. His trajectory was sky high, and as the season came to an end, Former Brazilian football players Pele and Romário reportedly urged the Brazilian national team coach, Dunga, to take Neymar to the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. Over 14,000 Brazilians followed suit, signing a petition, urging Dunga to take the young starlet to South Africa. But despite the pressure on the coach, Neymar was omitted from both the squad of 23 and the standby list, and although he described Neymar as extremely talented, Dunga was convinced that the 18-year-old had not been tested sufficiently on the international level to earn a World Cup spot. Out. Brazil's disappointing exit in the quarterfinals led to a refresh at the top. With a new coach in charge came new ideas and an injection of new players into the squad. Under new management, Neymar was finally given the opportunity to impress on the international stage, albeit in a friendly against the United States. 
The game, taking place in New Jersey, was a chance for the world to see Brazil's newest footballing export. And he didn't disappoint. Within 28 minutes of his debut for Brazil, he was already on the score sheet as Brazil went on to win 2-0. Having proven himself for both club and country, Neymar entered the 2011 domestic season with more determination and confidence than ever before. The season turned out to be one of Santos's most successful. Alongside winning the top league in Brazil for the second year running, Santos won the Copa Libertadores for the first time since 1963. The Copa pits all the best South American teams against each other and is seen as one of the most competitive tournaments in the world. The last time they won, Pele was playing for Santos, which led even more comparisons being drawn between the king of the game and Brazil's new kid on the block. On an individual level too, Neymar continued to shine. He was awarded the Puskas Award, an annual award for the best goal in football, after his solo effort against Flamengo. As a footballer, he's, 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 he's outstanding, you know what I mean? Uh, he's one of the few skilled footballers that we, we still have in the sports because I think they're trying to make it a passing game. But <laughs> for me, Neymar, Neymar is, is, is just a wonderful player. He's outstanding. And uh, just by watching his Instagram and stuff, he seems like a cool person. I haven't met him in person yet, hopefully very soon, but what can you say? He's one of the greats. His goal-scoring record continued to climb throughout the 2012 season, and by the end of the year, he was voted the 2012 South American Footballer of the Year. During the 2013 season with Santos, owing to his success on the football pitch, Neymar became the first Brazilian athlete to grace the cover of Time in March. And with that, Neymar was beginning to transcend football and become a globally renowned star. In May 2013, Neymar announced he was making the leap to European football with a transfer to FC Barcelona a powerful club that at the time featured superstar Argentine striker Lionel Messi and several members of the Spanish national team. Neymar still had one more game to play for Santos before he made the move, and he was visibly emotional during the national anthem before his final match. Two days later, he completed his move to Barcelona. And as is custom, he was introduced officially at Camp No, in front of a full stadium of fans, eager to catch a glimpse of their new star. Eu quero ajudar. Estou uh, realizando um sonho. De, de estar no mais que um clube que é o Barcelona e ajudar a equipe. E dizer que a emoção é muito grande de estar de, de ter a oportunidade de jogar com tantos craques é, que eu sempre admirei desde pequeno. É Messi, Xavi, Iniesta, é, enfim, tantos outros craques que se eu falar que todos estão no Barcelona, eu vou ficar até amanhã. 
Mas a felicidade é imensa, né? Agradecer a, a Deus por tudo. For anyone playing for Barcelona, the most important match of the year is El Clásico, where they go head to head with Real Madrid. Since their first meeting in 1902, the fixture has been known for its intense rivalry and has become one of the biggest club football games in the world. In his first El Clásico, Neymar's ability was on full show as he opened the scoring and assisted the eventual match-winning goal. Now there is a way to introduce yourself into a Clásico. The name of Neymar goes down in the history books. And certainly a terrific start for the Brazilian, following in the footsteps of Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, Romario. He does it with a bang in his first Clásico. Neymar had finally announced himself as a key member of the team. And by the end of his debut season at Barcelona, Neymar had 30 goal involvements, a sign of the great things to come in his career at the Catalan club. But as his first year in Spain drew to a close, there was only one thing on Neymar's mind, and that was returning to Brazil for the summer for the 2014 World Cup. And this time, he wasn't going to be left out. For any footballer, representing your nation at the World Cup is the ultimate dream. But to play in a World Cup on home soil is an opportunity that doesn't come around all that often. As the team star player, he had the weight of the country on his shoulders and was expected to help lead Brazil to their sixth World Cup success. The hospital scan revealed that Neymar had suffered a fractured vertebra in his spine. In a devastating turn of events, the Brazilian talisman, the next Pele, the boy wonder who was supposed to bring football glory back to his home country, was out of the World Cup. Não vou não vou falar que foi desleal, que ele veio querer me machucar, que veio na maldade porque eu não estava no que eu não não tô na cabeça dele para pensar para para saber disso. Mas todo mundo que entende de futebol, é, todo mundo que sabe que que é uma entrada que uma entrada que não é normal. Desculpa, desculpa. Eu poderia estar de cadeira de roda, né? Então é. In the semi-final, Brazil faced a strong German side who matched the South American team's pace and skill with energy and power. But without Neymar and their suspended captain, Thiago Silva, the chance of getting to the final felt like an impossible challenge. But with a near full stadium of predominantly home supporters behind them, there was some hope. Brazil, 
Unfortunately for Brazil, hope wasn't enough. It's strange. It's, I never expected something like this, so it's a kind of uh, very impressed, very excited. And on the other hand, I don't know what happens now. It was a panic before, and I don't know what happened. Germany won 7-1 in what was the worst loss by a host country in World Cup history. The game became one of the most discussed sports games ever on social media, and the Brazilian team were ridiculed. The selection is disputing the semi-final to make four goals in ten minutes. Not the best of the commentators, the specialists in football, will explain this. No one will know this because there is no explanation. For Neymar, recovering at home, the feeling of helplessness would only go on to motivate him for the next season back in Spain. Neymar returned to Barcelona soon after recovering from his injury at the World Cup, focused on the domestic season, determined to help the team fight for every trophy. With the transfer of Luis Suarez, who made the move from Liverpool for 81 million euros, Barcelona now had one of the best attacks in world football. With Neymar, Messi, and now Suarez, the Catalan team were about to take the Spanish League and European Cup by storm. It was goals galore throughout the season with the newest front three in European football outclassing opposition defenders every week. The three players gelled instantly and made Barcelona one of the most prolific and exciting teams to watch as they linked together to score a record-breaking 122 goals across the season. With goals came wins. And with wins came trophies. They lifted La Liga, Copa del Rey, and the Champions League trophies, otherwise known as the treble. And with 39 goals and 10 assists for the season, Neymar was an integral part of that success. The following season was more of the same for Neymar and his teammates at Barcelona. Messi, Suarez, and Neymar, collectively nicknamed MSN by the Spanish media, finished the season with 131 goals between them, breaking the record they had set the previous year. As an attacking trio, they were quite simply unstoppable. Although they didn't retain the Champions League, the club celebrated winning the domestic double for the second consecutive season. After the disappointment of the World Cup two years before, the chance to represent Brazil again at an international competition couldn't come soon enough for Neymar. Now he was four years older with more European football experience. The 2016 Olympic Games was a chance for Brazil's star player to right the wrongs of the previous World Cup. Once again, taking place in Brazil, Neymar returned to his homeland with all the confidence gained from his previous three seasons with Barcelona. Neymar was named captain. And with that, he wasn't just a teammate, he was a leader. The Brazilian Olympic team easily made it to the final, 
outclassing all opponents in their way. The final took place at the world-famous Maracana Stadium in Rio. Brazil once again faced Germany, the nation that had knocked them out of the 2014 World Cup in embarrassing fashion. The match was about more than just football. It was a chance for Brazilian redemption. By the end of the nail-biting match, neither team had the upper hand. The final would have to be decided by a nail-biting penalty shootout. Both teams scored their first four penalties, but with the pressure soaring, Germany missed their fifth penalty. Denied by Riverton! All Brazil had to do was score the next penalty, and the Olympic gold medal would be theirs. Neymar, their leader, their talisman, stepped up. Is it to be? He wrote his name in the history books for the quickest ever Olympic goal in the semi-final. Neymar of Barcelona, of Brazil, gives Brazil their first ever Olympic gold medal. Such delight, sheer joy. And just like that, Brazil won their first gold medal for football at the Olympics. The country celebrated, and Neymar da Silva Santos Jr., the boy from Santos, was now the man, the legend, the hero, that so many had hoped he would become. After four seasons in Spain, Neymar wanted to give himself a new challenge in a new league. But with a release clause of over 200 million euros, the 25-year-old was only in the price range of a handful of teams across the world. And it would be Paris Saint-Germain, now with the backing of the Qatari state, who had the funds to complete the signing of the Brazilian. PSG hadn't always been a wealthy club. And up until 1970, it wasn't a club at all. Incredibly, the capital of France didn't have a top football team until the formation of PSG. The French club was initially founded as a fan-owned entity. 20,000 members who all paid an annual membership fee helped keep the club running during its formative years. By 2011, PSG was sold to the Qatar Sports Investments Organization a state-run shareholding company owned by the Emir of Qatar. PSG became the first team to be state-owned, ushering a new and fairly controversial era in football where the lines between politics and sport began to overlap. With the backing of Qatar came a huge increase in budget for PSG, leading to a period of total dominance in the French League. Much like Real Madrid had had in the past, PSG went through their own Galactico era, culminating in 2017 when, alongside Neymar, they signed an equally exciting footballing prospect, Kylian Mbappe. PSG now had the two most expensive footballers ever playing for the same team. Ultimately, the two were brought in for one reason to help PSG win the illustrious Champions League trophy, a cup that the French team had never won before. But with the pace, skill, and firepower of Neymar and Mbappe, their chances of winning the European competition only increased. In March 2018, Neymar fractured the fifth metatarsal bone in his right foot against Real Madrid in the Champions League. PSG lost the match and were knocked out of the tournament. More importantly, Neymar was sidelined for the rest of the season. Despite failing to make another appearance for PSG while recovering from the injury, 
Neymar consequently ended his first season in Paris with 28 goals in 30 matches, including six goals in seven Champions League matches. Neymar was awarded the Liga 1 Player of the Year in 2018, a testament to the success of his debut year at PSG. For Neymar, the next five seasons at PSG would prove to be an overall disappointment. Whilst he continued to shine as one of the best players in the world, injuries plagued his career. When he did play, he showcased the same magic everyone was used to. And it was, of course, he who... But inconsistency, due to injury, became an issue for the Brazilian. More so, the elusive Champions League trophy that Neymar was supposed to help the Parisian team win remained out of their reach. At the end of the 2019-2020 season, PSG found themselves in the final of the tournament. Neymar had been named as one of the most instrumental players in their journey to the final. Facing a strong Bayern Munich this trophy in club football. PSG had found themselves with no clear vision for their football, hiring five managers in as many years to help steer the club in the right direction. But with each manager failing to win the Champions League, a new one would replace them, hoping to take PSG to the promised land of European glory. Even when PSG welcomed Lionel Messi to the team, reuniting with his Barcelona teammate didn't help Neymar. It was Groundhog Day for PSG. Another year, another manager, and still, no European trophy. By 2022, all eyes were firmly on the Middle East for the start of the 2022 World Cup. The choice to host the World Cup in Qatar attracted significant criticism, with concerns raised over the country's treatment of migrant workers, women, and members of the LGBT community, as well as Qatar's climate, lack of a strong football culture, and allegations of bribery for hosting rights and wider FIFA corruption. Brazil entered the tournament as one of the favorites alongside France, England, and Argentina. But once again... They truly are a footballing miracle! South American rivals, Argentina, went on to win the tournament, with captain Lionel Messi lifting the trophy in what felt like the culmination of his football career. Neymar returned to Paris, alongside Messi, to finish the season, which proved to be his last for the French club. By the summer of 2023, Neymar's move away from PSG was set in stone. With a new manager coming in, Neymar was informed he wasn't part of the club's plans. Although a move back to Barcelona was rumored, it never came to fruition. Luckily for Neymar, Saudi Arabia came calling, with pro league club Al Hilal offering to buy the Brazilian for 90 million euros. The 31 year old took the six hour flight to the Middle Eastern Kingdom and signed his biggest contract, earning over $100 million per year. And to put that figure into some kind of perspective, that's around $270,000 per day.
After a summer of training with Al Hilal, Neymar returned to the Brazil national team for a set of World Cup qualifying games. Neymar scored twice for Brazil in a 5-1 win over Bolivia. There was extra emotion attached to the goals following the death of Pele during the World Cup. Neymar stated after the game that he never imagined he would ever reach Pele's record, let alone break it. And with that, Neymar wrote himself into the history books, firmly alongside Brazil's greatest ever footballer. <laughs>